Simo! What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now today I'm going to bring you a video of my Galaxy Blue Eyes deck profile that I took to the Henderson Regional not too long ago. So in this video, what I'm going to do is you're going to get your typical deck profile as you'd expect, and in a supplemental video to come, I'm actually going to do an in-depth analysis of the regionals itself, like the matchups, things like that, things I could have done differently, and kind of a very self-reflexive video on how I could have improved at the event, done things differently, but also to kind of showcase how we can all improve as as players by looking at the game in a different way, kind of analyzing it from all aspects to improve our skills moving forward. So without further ado, we're going to get right into the deck profile. So to start off, we have three Blue Eyes White Dragon. You guys should be used to the whole Blue Eyes deck right by now, at least I hope so. So, you know, things like the Blue Eyes, the alternatives, these are all staples. Um, two Dragon Spirit of White. Um, you want to play two because you are playing Pot of Desires in this build. It's really good for banishing spells and traps. And the reason you play two is because you don't want you always want to have at least access to one you if bot of desires wasn't in the deck you could probably get away with playing one but i always want to have two just because that banishing is so so important uh so moving on you know, we just have standard stuff. Sage with Eyes of Blue. You want to max out on all these cards because these are your best cards. Three White Son of Ancients for Recursion and summoning, you know, things like Dragon Spirit of White in the end phase. Um, one White Stone of Legend. So, the thing is, because we are playing the Galaxy Soldier build, um, you could potentially up the amount of white stone of legend that you play to maybe two or even possibly three if you want to do that because the synergy with galaxy soldier plus a white stone of legend is really cool because it basically mitigates the cost of galaxy soldier by adding a blue eyes to your hand and then you can dump that blue eyes subsequently for the second galaxy soldier so you don't really lose a whole lot of advantage as you normally would and the cool thing is you're also feeding your graveyard at the same time and by doing so it's just making it much more better for your graveyard synergies like return Turn of the Dragon Lords and things like that. I believe in LA there was actually a deck that ran three White Stone of Legend and three Cards of Continents to kind of supplement the Galaxy Soldiers. So that's definitely a route you could take. Um, another note on this card as well: I made fucking Cyber Dragon Infinity more than I made fucking Dragon Spirit um, Blue Eye Spirit Dragon. So Galaxy Soldiers were so so good in the event. I was making Infinity left and right, and people really couldn't handle it. So it was it was a really really great card. Um, for the last of the monsters, two copies of Max C. We the deck wants to go first, but in the cases everyone else's deck wants to go first too, and we're forced to go second, then we want to have Max C to kind of slow our opponent down, especially things like Burning Abyss with Metal Foes. Any chance to just cut down their plays just a little bit is really, really good, and just dig in more further into our deck. So that's it for the monsters. I believe it's 20 monsters, as a matter of fact. It's it's around 20 if I'm if my numbers are off. So moving into the spells three potted desires um this is just literally the best card and the reason you want to play three i have been advocating for three potted desires forever you want to see this card as much as you can i was drawing this card so much and i did not have a single bad moment where i didn't wish i didn't have it the card is amazing i know some people want to play two because they don't want to see multiples of it i want to have the biggest chance possible to get a plus one at any time and if i draw two of it that's totally fine because we have ways to mitigate it and get rid of a second one if we don't necessarily need it so i say you should always play three the card is just fucking incredible and that's really all there is to it so going into the other three ofs three melody it just gets you to your alternative and your vanilla blue eyes three return like the most broken card ever because it just protects your monsters as well as being able to revive your monsters and it's not once per turn three trade in for the draw power i mean just this is just kind of standard stuff uh two copies of silver's cry i upped silver's cry to two i was originally playing one and the reason is because i wanted to have a fifth card to bring monsters back from the graveyard i kind of felt that Silver's Cry was such a good card, also, you know, in tandem with Return of the Dragon Lords, that I wanted to have a second uh, Silver's Cry because I felt like I wasn't seeing it enough, and every time I had it, it was never a bad card. So I was really happy I played the second one. I would typically side one out going into games two and three just because side deck space is kind of tight for this deck, but, you know, for the first game, you want to have as much aggression as possible, and I definitely feel like the second Silver's Cry really kind of adds to the aggression of the deck. Moving into the one-offs, one Dragon Shrine. I really like Dragon Dragon Shrine because it's a very good starter card and since we're playing you know even an extra Silver's Cry it's really good you have six cards that revive cards from grave 
It's really good for just, you know, getting your first initial setup, dumping your White Stone and your Dragon Spirit of White. Getting You don't lose any advantage by dumping White Stone. Even if you dump White Stone of Ancient, you don't lose anything. It's just a very good starter card and help enable just some very, very big plays that the deck is capable of doing. I wouldn't play more than one because it's if you draw multiples later on in the mid-game and the late game, the card becomes more, more useless. But the one, if you draw it, I think is perfect. And the times that I did, it was perfect. But if I banish it off Desires, it's no big deal. So that's why I feel like one is the correct number. One main deck, Regeki. I feel like maining Regeki right now is very, very important because of Jaugen. Um, and that's also the reason why you want to go first. Because if Metal Foes set up Jaugen or if Burning Abyss sets up Vanity Fiend, you're basically just going to lose. So I feel main decking the Regeki is very, very important when you're first, uh, when you're forced excuse me, to go second. Um, one copy of Soul Charge because it's basically a one condition in this deck. One copy of Twin Twister in the main. This is very similar to the Jaugen logic. Um, I wanted to have an out in case my opponent... It sets up vanities on the very first turn. Um, because I didn't want to immediately auto lose to it. And you know, there's a lot of draw power in this deck. It is possible to banish it off desires, but I'd rather have like a very slim percent chance of drawing into an out like Twin Twister than not having it in the main deck whatsoever and immediately auto losing that game. Subsequently, uh, Twin Twister is also really good because it allows you to just, you know, blow through back row as well. Like even if you're not focused on Vanity's emptiness, it's good against pendulum scales. It's good against just generic back row. Like this deck can play through a lot of back row, but it makes it even easier when you can just twin twister it and just keep going on with your play uh one up start goblin because we're playing 39 cards and we really don't need you know any other card in this deck and then uh for traps one vanity's emptiness because if you can get the stardust spark emptiness lock it's pretty fucking good and it pretty much auto wins you the mirror and can also auto win you some other games as well so that's it for the main deck it is a 40 card main deck uh, i think it's 2019 and uh, 2019 and 1 in terms of the monster spell trap ratio. Moving into the extra deck. Uh, two copies of Dragon Spirit. You should really never need more than two Spirit. The, um, the You could run three if you really feel like it. But the chances of that happening is very, very, very slim. Um, the card is just amazing and I absolutely love it. Uh, one copy of Azure Eyes. You, know, you could also run two of this as well. But I feel like I've only ever need to go into one because I usually should win the game after I go into the first one. One Ancient Fairy Dragon. You guys know I love the Ancient Fairy Dragon combo, which basically makes Crystal Wing a two-card combo with Sage. So that's why I'm playing that instead of Michael. Black Rose Moonlight Dragon for disruption on my opponent's turn. Stardust Spark for the Emptiness Lock. And Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon because it's a really fucking good card. Uh, moving on to the Xyz, we have one Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand because it's very, very strong against Burning Abyss once uh, Beatrice has been removed from the board. Um, 138 Hope Harbinger. Um, I didn't make it, but it's a very strong card nonetheless and can uh, actually be just a blowout in some cases. Um, number 46, Dragulon. In the Blue Eyes Mirror, this card is fucking incredible. I don't understand why some people don't play this card. This card literally will win you the mirror match in the right context. Uh, one Cyber Dragon Nova and one Cyber Dragon Infinity for uh, the... Uh, the Galaxy Soldiers, and then we have the Galaxy Eyes Package Cypher Dragon, Full Armor, and we have Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. So that's going to be it for the extra deck. Pretty straightforward. Um, you, I also was kind of missing a Gigantic Castle, which I actually think I have right behind me. I do. I was missing Gigantic Castle because I did get hit by Cherries at one point, and I needed to Synchro incredibly bad. Like, to win the game, I needed to Synchro, and I couldn't. So I actually was missing Gigantic Castle. So that's another option you can play in your extra deck as well if you want another way to make a level 9 Synchro. This is a really good option. So that's going to be it for the extra deck. We're going to quickly go into the side deck here as well. Uh, so for the side deck, we're playing two copies of Flying Sea for Burning Abyss because it pretty much just, you know, just makes it so they can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! So that's pretty good. Uh, two copies of Gamma Seal. This is good for just dealing with generic things that are like really hard to get over. So things like Beatrice, things like Crystal Wing, things I don't really want to deal with. Gamma Seal just handles it. Two copies of Ghost Ogre. This was actually for Metal Foes and Pendulums. I really wanted to have an answer for them if they chose to go first so I could help disrupt their plays. So that's what those are for. Two copies of Kwaki Meru Drago. This is for going first in the Blue Eyes Mirror. It can also be good going first against Burning Abyss and PK Fire because the whole deck is dark except for like Terror Top. So um, if they don't open the Terror Top, uh, they basically can't play the game. 
Uh, two copies of Swords of Concealing Light. This was incredible. This was my answer to pretty much anything, similar to Fashion to Gamma Seal. I wanted to have this instead of Dark Hole because I wanted to have an answer to something like Kirin because this stops Kirin because it doesn't uh, target or destroy. Um, this card put in work all weekend. I stopped things like Leo, uh, Keeper of the Sacred Tree. I was stopping Magis Specters. I w Every time I drew this card, it was phenomenal, so I couldn't have been happier about that. Uh, the other two copies of Twin Twisters for all the back row decks and things like that. And finally, three copies of Solemn Strike. This is for going first in the Blue Eyes Mirror, first going against Pendulum. You can really put this in going first against a lot of different decks, and that was kind of the theory behind it. Um, I think I might have cited them in a couple times. They did their job, but... Yeah, so that's going to be it for the deck profile. So go ahead, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the deck. Tell me what your guys' favorite build is of Blue Eyes altogether. Do you guys prefer, you know, the uh, Galaxy Soldier build? Do you guys like the Pure build? Or do you guys like the Brilliant Fusion build? Or if you have another build as well, be sure to let me down in the comments section below. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And to stay tuned for that supplemental... Uh, uh, regional report and deck analysis. We'll see you next time. See you next.